Hello everyone, Indy Brick Productions here with my review of the LEGO Star Wars set 7659, the Imperial Landing Craft. This set was released back in 2007 as part of the 30th Anniversary and New Hope line. It came with 471 pieces, 5 minifigures, and the one Imperial Landing Craft build, and all that for $50. If you wanted to get this set new, it would cost you about $92. I got mine sealed in the box for $100, and if you want to get this set used, it'll cost you around $55, and the pricing information is all from Brick Set, so thank you to them. With that all out of the way, let's take a look at the instruction Taking manual. a look at our instruction manual here, you can see the 2007 Darth Vader logo, as well as our set, and if you can see, there's a little slit of paper kind of sticking out right here, and if we flip to that page, you will find, oops, get that out of the way you will find that there's an extra sheet of paper right here, or an extra little instruction. And if we put this to the side real quick, you can see that you build the two cannons on step 12, and they just consist of three parts. But there's another step 12, and it X's out the old page, and it adds a fourth part to each of the builds. I guess there's like a design flaw. So that is very interesting to see. At first, I was nervous that my instruction manual had a rip in it, but if you do get the set, don't fret. It's just that it just comes with an extra page. And then if we flip to the back in our normal routine, you can see that we have some other ads for 2007 sets, as well as our first battle packs here, which is kind of sad to see because apparently they're going to be canceling battle packs or $15 battle packs for 2021. And then some more sets that show primarily play features. And then our parts list, as well as some LEGO Life ads. And then in the very back, you can see that we have a little graphic for our set, which I do like. So that's a nice little addition. I just wanted to take a quick look at the box because it is the 30th anniversary type box. You can see that there's a 30 up there by the Darth Vader. And if we flip to the side all the way on the other one right here you can see another little 30th anniversary of a new hope and then the back of the box just has some more advertisements and play features which i'll get into later in the set taking a look at our older style stormtrooper minifigure here this is the second rendition of a stormtrooper in lego form so it's nice to see that he's been upgraded a little bit since his past form which was in the earlier years of star wars if we take a look at his helmet here you can see that he has some eye holes as well as a little mouth right there. And then some little blue striping on each side. I'm not too sure what that re resembles, but I bet it's accurate. And then you can see the shaping of the helmet. Very nice for the time. And if we pop this bad boy off, you can see it in a bit closer detail-wise. And then he just has a normal old black head, so nothing really to see there. Um... Some people probably think that's better than the angry clone face. That's just up to you to decide. And then that torso is very, very simple, but it is effective, so I do like that. And then his pants or his legs are just white with some black hip piece. And then you can see he has a medium blaster right there. And there are two stormtroopers that come in this set. Taking a look at our stormtrooper lieutenant here, it's basically just the Stormtrooper, but he has this little pauldron on the side, which is orange and black, and it is of a rougher material, you can see. And if you do have this longer rifle-style blaster, which these guys have, you can see that it kind of pokes up almost into his shoulder. So if you do not want to kind of fray these, I would definitely put it in his other hand, just so that you can preserve your minifigures the best you can. And, once again, this set does come with two of these guys, so I do like that. And they kind of look like sand troopers. Taking a look at our TIE Fighter pilot, this is the first rendition of this type of pilot, or the minifigure in general. It does have a very nice-looking black helmet, same as the Stormtrooper, just in a different color. And it also has some little Imperial logos on each side. If we take that off, much the same as the stormtroopers you can just see it's a normal plain old black head and then also some black pants and then a little belt up in the front right here as well as some little ventilation tubes 
which help him fly and probably stay stable up in those fast conditions. And from the back, it's just a plain old black figure. So, overall, pretty nice figure. And here's the set all built up. So, let's take a look at the cockpit first. I think that's a good place to start. It's connected very simply, just with some little clips, and it can pop off like so. You can see a little bar right there and some clips. And it's connected to the main frame of the build, which runs all the way, kind of like a spine. And then that can just clip in nice and simple if you just take this part off. And then you can just pop it back on right there. And it can kind of act as an escape pod if you want it to. And then its head can tilt down nice and simple like that. Then you can see some little trans neon blasters up at the front. And then if we put that back down, this whole cockpit piece can come off. So I do like that mold. And if we take our TIE Pilot here, I'll give you a closer look at the inside. You can see that it has a little control panel and some little red cheese slopes. And this control panel can move up and down. The back is flat and flush so that you can stick your pilot in there. Whoops, let's see if you'll stay on, perfect. And then you can kind of just close it up like so. So he fits in there nice and neatly. This will move around and jiggle, but it's going to stay on there very nice. Then taking a look at this large kind of dorsal fin of the set. Actually, let's take a look at the two back fins. So you can see this little crank here next to the engines, which are basically just made up of cylinder trans blue pieces. If you crank the cylinder, like a little crank here, you can see that the mechanism kind of has like a little worm gear at the bottom, which connects it all to the big engines back here. And if you turn it to the right, it'll tighten. And if you turn it to the left, it'll actually move the wings down slowly. And if I'll just pick this up, you can see it move into a flight position and then you can fly it away. So I really appreciate that, that Lego was able to do that in this old of a set. And then you can crank it back nice and easily. But I'll leave those open for a bit so that we can see the fin up here. It's made of these very blocky pieces. You can see some weirdly colored parts, like some grays. This is the newer gray because Lego had just made the switch a couple of years back. And you can see some little orange translucent studs on each wing to show like some lights. And if we fold these all the way up, then we can get a closer look at these. So these are all big panels right here. And there's some on the other side. Very nice. And what you can do is you can actually flick these open to reveal the cargo bay or your troop transport itself. And if you take an inside look at that, very nice. But there is a mechanism that I will show you right now that will allow me to show you it in a bit more detail. So you can see some rudimentary looking landing feet. But if you look at the back and you see this red clip kind of clipped in there, you pull on this ball joint and you pull that out of this little clip right here. And you go to the front, move the head up, and you remove this red one up here. Put the head back down. And what you can do is let me just flap these back down real quick for the demonstration, is you can pull up on this fin and it'll actually just remove it and then just this whole section will fly away, which will allow us to look at this little build right here. I do like this build. I think it has some nice little quality to it. These little torpedoes in the back, if I just remove them, they can be taken apart and you can put them in these little slots so if I just load those up on each side, you can actually see that on the back, there are these little knobs with these rubberized pieces. And you can see as I push it up, that it'll go up. But if I remove it, oh, one of them popped out. Let me just fix that real quick. But if you pull up on them, it'll actually move down and release them. Well, let me get that in frame a little bit better. If you pull up. It kind of just drops them so you can have it flying around and shoot those off. So I do like that. 
And if we want to take our stormtroopers here, and we can take out these big guys' guns because they tend to get in the way. And you can kind of just stack them right here. And right here. And you can actually fit around like 10 figures in here, super crammed together, which I do like. And they can have, sit in these little blue chairs, like so. And then you could fit some more figures in between these and all in here. So I do like that. I personally like to fit the other two stormtroopers just kind of right here so that it looks like they're manning the guns. Uh, they're not wanting to fit in today. All right. And then you can see that these little trans neon cones right here, if you push out on the one that sticks out more, it'll actually trigger this mechanism and shoot it back. So it'll shoot off like that with a, a lot of firepower. And basically, it's just one of these darts, but it has a red kind of stem to it. And the tip is res rubberized, so it's not going to really affect you or harm you in any way if you get shot by one of these. And then it's super simple to reload it. All you have to do is just kind of push it back into the cannon. Nice and easy. And the other one does shoot out as well, so very nice. And let's just say your troops are all done with their battle. You have the two in there. Let me just take out their guns. And you want the ship to come pick them up. You can grab your drop ship, lift up the little flaps, sit it on right back down, clip them back in, fold these back down, and take off. So I really do like that design. Um, overall, I really like this set. I do think it has a lot of charm to it. I especially like this little back engine section right here with this little crank mechanism. I sadly don't have an M motor or a Lego motor to show you it mon motorized, but I guess that's kind of a good thing to save your ears because those things are a bit loud. But yeah, overall, I really like this set. So let's move on to my final thoughts. My final thoughts on this set is it's an excellent set for 2007. It has some great playability features, including the dropout feature and the wing crank. I do love those two features of the set. It has the nice rubberized missiles in the front, which is a nice extra plus. So if you are looking to buy this set, I would say it's 100% worth your money. You will not be disappointed by this set. So that's it for me today. If you did go on to like the video, please like and subscribe. I will be coming out with more videos next week, like I said. So stay tuned for those. Indie Brick Productions is out. Bye. And may the brick be with you.